Okay, what is up everybody? So I'm finally going to be doing my weekly recap. Um, obviously, as you can see, it has been the second worst week that I've ever had, I guess. So clearly something went wrong throughout the entire week. Uh, the main thing that I see here is I took more trades than I've ever taken before on any given week. And at the same time, the market is also, you know, the slowest that it's ever been. So clearly, I am over trading. There is some key thing that I am missing that is making me take all of these trades thinking that they're okay so I must be taking like B setups and you know maybe even C setups or something I'm just not clearly seeing it you know why exactly it looks that bad or not but I'm not gonna go over the numbers too much they're pretty much just kinda disgusting to look at so no sense in going over it but this is kind of what I'm sitting looking at here. Uh, started with JWN, symmetrical triangle on a bull flag. I was kind of paying attention to it just now. So I took two trades on it, uh, roughly around the same area here. So let's see. This trade, I remember, if I ever go back to the five minute chart on it. So I got one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Five. So it's having a really hard time struggling to close on the fives above the VWAP. So I'm trying to short it right now. So shorting it as the 20 is coming in, obviously below VWAP. Uh, volume isn't spectacular for that early in the day. Probably could have been another contributing factor. Why am I watching this so slow? So yeah, I haven't I haven't even clicked on the five minute chart yet, so I got no idea what it's doing. Okay, so we get a nice little breakdown there, but immediately bought right back up. So at this point, I'm sitting up, sitting up 40 bucks. That's another thing that, you know, my mentor and some other people have been talking to me about has been, like, taking profits, really. I mean, I'm sitting up, you know, 40, I think at one point, I was up 50, yeah, I'm up $55 on this trade. Uh, I wrote down my profit target was 40.20, so I'm trying to really stretch this thing out here. I'm trying to really catch it on, like, a huge move down. I'm not even... I should be looking to take profits, because another thing that I noticed this weekend, and I was taking a lot of trades into some pretty significant wicks. I mean, that's a really big pullback right here. And, you know, we got the wick down here, and then another wick, and then another pullback. Then it's coming right back up, so I mean... I should be thinking, okay, if I'm going to short this kind of against the fives, because if I remember right, the fives were telling me, you know, it's it's a better long situation. I can't remember what the daily levels were. Looks like I wrote 40.15, but we aren't playing around that, so that was at the low of day there. I mean, I should be looking to take profits around here, you know, pretty much exactly where it's at right now, so... Obviously, you know, third time it's going to re recreate the exact same situation that just happened. And it just pulls back just like that. So, I mean, I totally missed out on those profits. And just as fast as I was up 50 bucks, I am now down 50 bucks. You know, I'm, I'm even getting a second chance here. And, you know, same situation, it's just moving straight up and I end up taking a fifty dollar loser whenever I was up and you know the exact same amount so I mean that would have been a short quick scalp there uh, same situation again looking for another short this time though looks like my profit target was forty fifty so it's still still the same area I mean you know, it's retested, you know, three times. I mean, maybe it could break down again, but again, looking at the volume here, it's just going crazy low there. So I'm in at 66. 
And again, I don't really know why I'm looking at this for a short because, you know, just looking at the candles now, you can see that it's still closing above the view app. And for this trade, especially for the past five minutes, you know, it's been struggling to close. So, I mean, it looks like a much better long than a short. But I took it short anyway. Making a pretty decent move again. Not reaching as far as it did the uh, first three times. I mean, I'm using pretty big size, too. So, I mean, if I really wanted to give it that much room, you know, it could close just as fast against me as it could uh, closing below. So, another situation where I'm up just a little bit on the trade. The second trade was not near as good as the first one. Because this one's pretty much just like a slow grind. Either moving down or up. So, okay. Oh, nope. Just missed it. There it was. So here's the fives. You can see we had that huge candle and a huge wick, and then closing above, still closing above, still closing above. Still closing above, still closing above, and then now we're finally starting to see a little move down here. And we're closing below. But at the same time, you know, all those candles were telling me, you know, it's a long and it doesn't want to stay below the VWAP, so I should be looking for a, if I'm going to short it, it should be a short, quick profit. I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing bad about it, taking it short like that, but you're kind of trading against the pattern, so I'm really trying to stretch out what I think it could give me. And I mean, it squeezes up and then moves right back down again. Okay, so mistakes made. Um, didn't watch higher time frame. It's not that I didn't watch it, I didn't respect it. Um, I didn't have proper profit target points or profit taking button clicking abilities. So didn't set proper profit targets and didn't take at right spots. So that's the first three trades, or first two trades, I already made three mistakes. And that was to start off the week. So, you know, first two trades being down 100 bucks, not feeling too great. So, now I'm looking at it for long. I think I was thinking, alright, well, if it's not going to be a short, then maybe it's going to be a long. And the same case comes back down again. I end up shorting again, taking some 61, only half size, because that was a good side on me, where I recognized that, okay, we'll struggle with that area, so I should only get half size, and then I'll add again if it breaks that. So I haven't seen a significant break yet. Profit target was again 50. Okay, so there we got a very nice move. Uh, again, reaching about the low of this candle here. And then, I mean, I get that terrible squeeze there. What happened? So, I mean, I'm up. You know, again, same situation. I'm up 57 bucks. I hit my 1R. 
and then it just kind of turns around against me and I don't I don't take anything I don't click any buttons I don't take any profits and I and then I let it wait way too long there and I, I only get two cents on the trade it comes back it comes back but it doesn't matter that it came back what matters is I should have done it in the first place whenever I had that opportunity you know I'm really I'm really pushing my limits here as to what I should be taking because I just had two losing shorts on this trade and I shorted again for a third time and then I finally get that move but then I don't take it where I should be taking it but I mean it does make a nice move and I mean if I traded it the right way and I held on to my partial it's pretty much exactly what it was doing here you know it was a pretty decent trade I mean I made sixty bucks on it but I could have managed my money a little bit better on that so what did I do so that was this trade here. Yeah, two and a half, and then I got obviously only got the two cents on that one. So the next trade that I took was a rising wedge on Excel. Try to look at daily levels here, and the only daily level that I have is 3087. So pretty much where VWAP is. So I'm catching it short right now on the break. Profit target was 50, so very short, short trade, and I get it. Oh yes, that was the trade where I had to leave too early. So it was just a really, really short one there. Ended up coming down and touching the 50. Wasn't a bad trade. I mean, seen on the fives, you know, the the nine wasn't quite caught up yet. So this trade, JWN on. It is a falling wedge, but I played it like a descending triangle. I even labeled it as a descending triangle. But I, I also labeled it as an error because it's not a descending triangle. So I'm trying to short it out of this wedge that it's making right now. So in turn, it really just kind of continues the wedge. It's not really, not really breaking underneath anything necessarily. It's just kind of continuing the pattern that's already a bullish pattern. So I was looking to take this, take profits around 50 because that's where the uh, the next daily level was. I squeeze pretty hard there. See, at this point, I should have recognized, okay, it's not a descending triangle, because it's not breaking out. It's just kind of continuing the wedge formation here, just kind of resetting. So what I should be doing is just exit and look to re-enter maybe somewhere else. If I remember right, I think it did move down more. Yeah, you see on the fives, you know, it's clearly a wedge. I mean, yeah, you could get a nice move down, but that's not the real pattern that you're looking for. So there's the breakout up. But for some reason, I didn't, I didn't take that trade. I don't remember where this one ended up at. I actually do want to look at it. So we are going back to. I think this was it right here. Yes, it was. So, ended up moving down to. No, I'm not. Was this one? Didn't really do anything. You know, cause, I mean, of course, whenever that nine on the five is gonna catch up. You know what is that? At Twenty-three. So I mean, if I took this trade, I could have maybe gotten twenty cents out of it. Yeah, there's right there. I mean, just came up and tapped it. You know, it could have been a decent one-to-one -one trade, which is kind of what I aim to look for on uh, wedge trades. It's just that one-to-one. -one. So if I took it the right way, it could have been another winner. So then I got this an another Excel trade, and I remember something was a little off about this one. 
So I took it as a symmetrical. Another breakout up, gets a decent move. Comes right back. Okay, so I'm looking at the fives. The nines are really nice here. Profit target was. Oh, profit target was the whole number, so it's a good spot. I took 400 shares on it, though. That's pretty big size. And yeah, I'm down $80 on the trade almost immediately there. I just said forget it. And it did end up coming back. I don't know. This one was kind of weird because I think I played this one on the ones and I definitely should have been playing on the fives because the 50, it hasn't really broken out of the 50. It's been kind of getting restricted by the 50. You know, the 50's on the top end of this triangle that it's making. The 50's not underneath it. So, I mean, yeah, I can break out over it, but, I mean, it didn't really, it's only slightly closed. I mean, it pulled straight back, so it really wasn't looking that good. That's probably a trade that I should have either waited on it, and I should have taken it on the fives instead of the ones. Yeah, I traded on the ones. Could have been another half size trade. Ah, oh, shoot. Um. Okay, so if I traded on the fives, it would have been more like this. My size would have been much smaller. And I would have been in the trade longer because, you know, you can see that. Just a few seconds later, I end up exiting out of this trade, and then... Refilm it again. I mean, it ended up hitting that 32 level. Pulled back down here. I remember the 9. This probably wouldn't have caused me to get out, because on the 9, that's pretty much right where it bounced off of, and then, of course, you know, it moves up. Still not doing anything wrong. I don't know what it did later in the day. Okay, got a whole bunch of stuff on this. See, so yeah, that's that's where it bounced off of there, and it came right back up to 32. You know, and no problems at all, really. I mean, I could have taken a partial here and then just rode the rest until you know, you see something like this or another something at the high of day there. I mean. You know, I should have been a winning trade, but I just traded on the wrong time frame. So another mistake, traded wrong time frame. I kind of, I think I wanted it to work on the ones, so I traded it on the ones. But obviously, higher time frame always wins. So if I'm trading on the ones like that, you know, I'm taking huge size like that. I don't really know what else to expect. Uh, another mistake is I, I could have used half size on that trade. I could have used, uh, you know, going back to these wicks here, you know, it's it's got some resistance here causing it to pull back. So I could have taken half size on the break of this 50 here in the, uh, the triangle that it was making on the ones and then added again as it broke out. Because that could have been, you know, instead of an $80 loser, I could have been a $40 loser. At worst case scenario, $40 loser. Um, going back to that JW entry, I didn't write. My mistake was uh, didn't trade the right pattern. I kind of stretched the truth on that one. I wanted it to be a descending triangle. and I was like, you know, it's kind of close enough to it, so maybe I'll just trade it like that. Alright, so that was that whole day there. I mean, I'm trying to think of spots where I was over trading on that. You know, the first, the first couple trades in JWN that I shorted, I might not have wanted to short those two, but the third trade was a good trade, not just because it was a winner. 
but because the fives are all telling me one thing and then I'm looking at it for something else. In fact, what candle was that? That was that was the first candle after the five minute formed. Now I short it again. And then now I think that candle right here is where it closed below. So now it's a decent trade. I mean it comes back. But then you get the real short there. That's the fifteens. I don't want the fifteens. Yeah. yeah, close above, close above, close above. And then I took it short right about there. Puts me all the way back at 19. I don't know why it looks like this. I mean, it's clearly making a triangle. It's just when is it going to break out of that triangle? Because, you know, it doesn't really want to go long, it looks like, because, I mean, it keeps closing above on the fives, but I guess with everything coming in on it like this, with the 20 kind of kind of active support. I don't know. It wasn't the cleanest trade, I guess. Let's go to the next day. So, come back from a crazy day. Next day I took two trades on SNCR, a falling wedge, and a symmetrical. my morning day thing or something. Alright, so looking at SNCR, so I waited about half an hour to take my first trade on this day. Does make it fall away. It just looks like the 50's holding it pretty well here. Uh, only problem is, obviously, you know, I'm taking it into the pivot line, as well as that 20. I'm going profit target for 70 cents, so I'm trying to take this thing to VWAP. Hmm. I don't know if I looked at it on the fives or not. I don't think I did. Okay, yeah, I mean, you can't really tell there's a wedge from the fives. So I am trying to get half size, which is good. But kind of the same situation, you know, we, we even closed below the nine there. I mean, if it closed at or above the nine, that's a much better sign. Because, I mean, I'm trying to... This is, this is an ugly trade. This is a trade I should not be taking. Immediately turns around. I, I guess I cut it, you know, I cut it short, but. I don't know. Maybe I could have cut it faster, I guess. I, that one's up in the air. So, JD, I'm looking at it for the triangle. Short 500 shares out of it. Profit target 70 cents. No. Profit target 40 cents. I, why am I trying to get this thing all the way down at 40 cents? That's ridiculous. I don't know why I'm putting my profit target there. I am only risking 6 cents on this one, though. Yeah, I don't know what I'm thinking on that one. This ended up being a $50 loser. I think I took the full loss on it. Yeah, I took the full loss and then some. Yeah, if I'm only I'm only risking thirty bucks and I end up cutting it way too short, I guess. 
Plus, it's not the cleanest of stocks. I mean, you see these little th dinky things in here. I mean, it's... If anything, I should be trading this on the fives. I did trade it on the fives. So what do I do? So I get down to 60. I mean, that's about... That's about it right there. Right there, that is more than enough right there. Because, I mean, it's the low of the day right there. It just hit low of day. And I'm trying to hold on to this thing, thinking it's going to go, you know, another 20 cents. Which is just ridiculous. Especially on a stock that looks like this. I mean, it looks really good in the sense that, you know, you got all of this stuff overhead. That's fine. But it's just my profit target spot. Oh, there's the fives. So here's the fives. Um, it could be a much nicer looking triangle on the fives, but I drew the triangle on the ones. And it broke out. And even on the fives, you still got everything ahead. So, I mean, this is a good trade. It's a good trade up until the point where I don't take my profits where I should be taking my profits. I was up $45 on that trade at one time. And I don't do anything. I mean, there, there really isn't anything wrong with taking one-to-one -one trades, because with the way that I've been trading, you know, whenever I take these trades and they're winners, like, they'll hit my one-to-one. -one. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, obviously you want something like a two-to-one or a three-to-one. But, I mean, if I can get a one-to-one, -one, like, why, why not try and do that? You know, if it if it doesn't break out right when I think it should break out, you know, maybe that's where I need to be cutting my losses and thinking a little bit, a little bit more, and uh, breaking my rules here, not sticking to my closing. Well, I traded on the fives. If I traded on the fives, I'm still fine, because my stop loss is above the nine, but on the ones it closed above the nine, and it it's starting to act around the uh, twenty. I remember thinking this whole time, like, you know, it's got so much to break through right now. And there was a real move. I didn't... Hold on. Okay, so I take this trade. I think it's going to get down to 40. Maybe because that's a daily level. No, JD wasn't even on my watch list. It gets down to right where it should get down to. I do nothing. It comes back. And it comes back even harder. I mean, we close above the uh, yesterday's close. That's a significant problem, really. So, I mean, this could have been a really tiny loser. You know, there's nothing wrong with going back into the trade, except now it might. Now it's making a wedge, yeah. It's definitely making a wedge now. I mean, I close this thing out on the fives after it breaks out above that. Which I guess there isn't anything, you know, bad about that. You know, even even later on, if I if I wanted to hold on to it and see where the bar closes, yeah, it does that. But I mean, I should have been, you know, taking my profits and probably exited with like maybe like a twenty twenty dollar winner. It might have been all that I could get out of it, really. Even if I held it on the five, that's that's pushing it here in this candle. I mean, the next candle has a really nice breakdown again. Kind of want to see it. That was the 17th. It's all over the place in here. So yeah, it comes back, comes back, retests. Uh, comes back to VWAP and retests, and then makes an even bigger move down. I don't really think that I could have been a part of that trade, though. How does this thing send me all the way back to September? I mean, 
mind that there's there's not really a trade in here. I mean, I'm looking at this as like a wedge, really. And at that point, you know, it's it's still a wedge. It's not it's not really a triangle. I mean, I could have tried to short it, but you know, you're taking it right into this again. And of course, it comes back and retests and everything. So, just another situation where I'm. My profit targets are not on point, and I'm really trying to, I'm trying to catch the home runs, I guess. I'm not trying to, you know, hit singles and doubles. I'm trying to get those $100 winners, you know, every single trade, and obviously that just can't be how I'm trying to do things. So, just kind of doing a repeat of mistakes there, just profit target issues. So we got IBM. Oops. Don't want that. Don't you pause? Uh, it didn't take IBM. Oh, I think IBM. This is the trade that I didn't get filled on. So looking back at the fives, I mean that's good. That's a good looking setup right there. You know, it's sticking above the BWAP, but you got these huge wicks. So I mean, it probably doesn't have that much potential to make a big move up. Kind of the 20s overhead, so I mean, it could go either way, but it looks better for a long because of the fives. We're right at the whole number, so I mean, my entry's in a good spot. I only had six cents of uh, of limit. I mean, I think that thing jumped up like 20 cents or something. So I mean, that's a that was a $60 trade. That was a $60 trade in like three seconds. Alright, maybe a little more than three seconds because my playback is really fast, but. I don't know if I wrote something for that or not. IBM. My profit target was 157.25. So I made my profit target much shorter on that one. Yeah, I was risking 20 to make 25. That's a lie. I wrote it down wrong. Oh, that was just in case it was a short, it was 25. My actual profit target on this one was 158.50, so I'm trying to get this thing near high a day. Probably should have made it a little bit shorter, you know, right about where it ends up, really. Because, I mean, that's it right there, and that's right where it bounces off of. Comes back up close to 40, comes back. Alright, trade that I did take was AGN. Traded on the fives. Profit target 191, so I'm trying to short it, so that's a good spot. What happened? I won on this trade. Uh, symmetrical bear flag. Yeah, it's bear flag. Turn the fives. Volume looks decent. Not great. Uh, only 75 shares. We'll go back to that. Really interesting action around the view app for sure. I mean, it can't can't really do anything here. It's just kind of coiling and coiling and coiling. You know, the nine's kind of catching up finally. So this is a good trade. The only problem is I'm trading it on the fives. I'm entering at 65. I mean, it's a big mover. It's yeah, got a range of $8. So, I mean, yeah, 75 shares is probably, you know, 100 shares is even pushing it, really. Because I try and imagine the worst case scenario. Yeah, it looks better for a short. Gap down, negative news. Um, I mean, it could go for a long, you know, kind of looking at the at the ones here. You know, you, you might even think that it looks good for a long. I don't know. I still like a short. Just a feeling, I guess. Field at 69. Bumps down to 50s. Pulls right back up. So in that kind of situation, what should I be doing? What should I be thinking? Retest. Goes a little bit lower. 15 cent spread. So we're in the 20s there. I, rem I remember looking at it. 
because I saw that the bid was in like the low tens, but the ask wouldn't break 30, and I wanted to see it. I right, it wouldn't be like, like 28 or something like that, and I really wanted to see it in the tens before I did anything. So now it's moving kind of slow. Might be looking like it might recover. Might want to be thinking about taking profits really soon here. If it starts running, if it's not breaking down, you know, quickly, then it might be time to start thinking about taking profits. But we do get down there. We're in the tens. Cover at 19. But then I think I wanted to see it break the whole number just like it's doing. And it pulled back really hard. It's right back though. So it's making another push here. I should be thinking about taking profits again. But if I am trading on the fives, you know, you want to give it the time. Fives, you want to do a candle over candle. So right now, actually, is exactly where I want to be looking to get out. Because if it's going to close within that last five-minute candle, you know, I want to be looking to take what I got and get out here. But I don't. I wait a little bit. I was like, all right, I'll give it till the ones then. Cause, you know, don't mind seeing it bounce off of the ones. But if it pulls back like that, I need to be getting out. I waited a little bit too long on that. That was uh. I got out at 45. I should have gotten out in the 30s there. So the mistake on this one was just waiting. Just waited too long to uh, exit the trade and take profits. Okay, next trade RXDX. Looking good on the fives for another bear flag. That is what I labeled it as. I'm taking it long. So the 20's catching up. The 9's kind of maybe catching finally underneath. You got two minutes till the candle closes. So I want to take it back to VWAP. Part of target. That's not right. Profit targets at 50. Right? Yep, profit targets at 50. So my profit targets right here at 50. Oh, I'm a little low. Uh, kind of had some struggles with this area up here. So I mean, if it's not gonna break 30, I think this is another situation where I should have done half size, um, half size to start and then add again if it breaks this level because. It's looking like it's been struggling. Was that 35? Yeah, I mean, just looking at all these wicks, you know, everything's pulling it down. There's really not much. 50, 50 is probably even pushing it. I mean, maybe 40. There's probably another one-to-one -one trade. Decent break on volume though, like that. Let's see if we can hold above the movie averages. Hitting 30s, 35. Now we're in the 40s. So, uh, same situation. I'm just not... I'm not paying enough attention, I guess. I don't really know. I'm up 37 on this trade. If 
my risk was five cents, so I'm risking twenty cents to make about twenty-five. It should have been more like twenty for twenty. Because just looking at all these wicks, you know, it's almost it's almost a miracle that it got even as far as it did. I wanted to see it hit that fifty though, so I mean, I held out for it. Obviously, that's that's the point right there, you know, where everything's been pulling back. So I mean, fifty is absolutely the limit. Good volume though. It's kind of retesting again. Luckily enough for me. Going back to break even. Breaking that trend line. Yeah, I mean, I'm really, this whole week, this whole week has just been a mess with profit targets. I mean, it, it killed me. It destroyed me. You know, I hate to think about these, like, scalps, but I mean, the way that almost my trading has been working is that, you know, it, all, it hits my profit target in, like, two minutes. Two minutes or less, and then, you know, those are the good trades. Or at least it hit what should have been my profit target in two minutes or less. But I'm still holding out for this thing. and I take a teeny tiny loser, so at least it wasn't a, wasn't a bad loser, but it should have been a small winner. Alright, SPPI. Symmetrical flag. Traded it on the fives. Risk of 40, so I'm letting this thing go all the way to VWAP. So that's a. Uh, that's a lot. I don't know if I did I click on the fives. I did. Alright, so this is it on the fives. Looks really good on the fives. I didn't draw it the best. Either way, that's the top of it. I mean, you got these things coming on. This is a pretty good-looking trade here. It's at its all-time highs, too. Just kidding. No, it's not. Oh, yeah. This is that stock that had stuff from, like, 2003 or something coming into play. So I have 20 as a level, and then I have 2447 as a level. So we're not anywhere near any significant daily places. Uh, I wrote my profit target 2130, so... 21 is a much better area for a profit target. And giving it, giving myself that extra 30 cents is kind of iffy. Because again, looking at these gigantic wicks, especially on the fives. Hmm. If I traded it on the ones, I could have used the moving averages. But since I traded it on the fives, I gave this thing 40 cents. Hmm. I think that if I traded this on the ones, it could have been a much tighter risk and it could have been a much better trade. But since I traded on the fives, I gave it all of this room and I made my risk huge. Well, not necessarily huge, but I gave it a lot of space. Uh, I gave it a lot of space for what realistically is not going to be a very big move at all. So let's just see what happens. I traded on the ones, I mean, I probably could have taken 200 shares instead. Uh, 
Doesn't like the moving averages. Good sign. So I'm in 100 shares. Makes a very nice move straight up there. <laughs> and then gets rejected really at the same situation, you know, whenever I'm taking these trades, you know, it hits my profit target in like two minutes or less. So maybe you get that big break, but then it turns around real hard. Mm, I don't even know if I would have been quick enough, really. I mean, boom, it's up there. Pl yeah, no, I had I had plenty of time to take a profit there. I mean, now that I'm looking, I'm, I'm not surprised that it's doing what it's doing. Yeah, this is definitely much more of a one-to-one -one kind of trade. mistake that I made. mistake that I made is I'm forcing my risk reward onto the market. I wanted I wanted to take the trade, but I knew that if I took it my risk reward was going to be awful, so I just made my profit target just 2130. I just did that. I think just so I could take the trade. So now it's getting a little iffy because we're starting to really break underneath the 9 there. I'm trying to add more on a break of the whole number. So now we're getting to that trend line. I think this was the one where I was thinking to myself, okay, well, it's gonna, if it's going to break the 9, it's fine. We have the 20, we got the trend line, and we got the 50. So it'll probably bounce off of that. kind of does. but then it doesn't bounce back. It just kind of hovers there, and I'm sitting there waiting. I give it so much. <laughs> I get all the way out at the bottom. That was ugly. So I waited way too long to... So the previous trade, I waited too long to take profits. And this one, I waited too long to take a loss. I gave it way too much room. I should have been a $20 loser instead of a $40 loser. That was the last trade that I took of that day. So we are up to a lot of mistakes so far. Alright, day 100. It has been 100 days of me doing these videos. So we're going to unit for a VWAP bounce. Very nice move up. Nine was catching up to it perfectly. Took 400 shares, so I'm in pretty good size. Uh, the only question is, where do I really want my profit target to be? Um, 
because I don't really have anything besides the 40. I may, I may not profit target the high of day. So again, unrealistic profit target points. I did take half though. That was a bad wick. It turns a little bit red on me. Kind of bounces. I mean, at this point, I should just be getting out. I mean, there's no, there's no bounce anymore. I mean, it, it did its bounce, and now it's coming back again. Now it might form a triangle later in the day or something. But the bounce is over with. There's no more, there's no more VWAP bounce play to be had. So I'm really just, I'm asking to lose money right now. And I turn, you know a very tiny decent winner into a four dollar loss waited too long to exit again so I got Adobe uh, I am looks okay for a long to start could be a short depending on what it does later though. Could be a good long. So now it's looking like a good short. Because we're getting under the view app. So I do short it. Uh, what did I say? I was in at I was in at 14 basically in at the whole number 166 profit targets 165 so I'm trying to I'm trying to catch this thing down here at the lows that's it's kind of pushing it it's not a terrible spot but it's definitely not a great spot either Pulling back. I exit the trade. Small loser. That's fine. That's fine because I am re-looking at the trade again, trying to see if it's setting up for something else. Maybe it still looks good for a long. Maybe it just wants to kind of reset again, and maybe it'll be a good short in a couple minutes or something. So now I'm probably looking for a long. Risk was 50. So now I am on with 75 shares. And this is where I wuss out. This is where I... I was like, okay, well, it didn't really break out or anything. But, I mean, I... It's about finding that balance. It's about finding... Because I've been talking about for the past few stocks is, you know, I give it too much room for a loss. So then in this case, I don't give it enough room. And then I'm talking about waiting too long to take profits. I didn't even give this one time to get to a profit. I mean, it didn't even come back and retest the, the moving averages or anything. You know, my the trade that I took before this, yeah, that's definitely a reason to get out. But this was, I I think I just got scared. I mean, I just, I took a $9 loser. I took a $9 loser on a stock that hadn't even done anything yet. It hasn't proved me wrong. It hasn't, hasn't proved me right. But, I mean, there's the move. But I'm not in it. exited too early hmm I guess I guess I'll just put I didn't give it hmm I definitely didn't give it enough time yeah, I didn't give it enough time it's just that's all there is. Looked at PM. 
This was the ugly one where I decided to add. So, symmetrical triangle, shorten it. Uh, it doesn't look great for a short. Came out of a BWAP. Still trying to move higher. Uh, we're just now starting to close again under VWAP. Look at the moving averages are over the top of it. It's a good sign. We do have a shooting star, which is good. I'm short. When did I get short? So I was short. Okay, I'm I'm short in an okay spot. That's not bad. I do want to see the fives though. Comes back. I do have pretty big size. First stock has got a four dollar range. Definitely big size. For whatever reason, I don't exit the trade. I guess I'm giving it to the top of that trend line. I mean, it was an okay thing though because it comes right back. But then that that bothered me a lot. That's that's a sign where I'm I need to be thinking like, okay, something's going on here. That's that's not good price action. It's not very clean. But I'm still holding. Wait, that was the fives. Okay, so we got the fives. Um Yeah, I don't know. Could really go either way. The nine's not really close at all. I mean, it's almost like a bull flag. But then I guess if you look at the ten minutes, it's a bear flag. Let's see, what did I do with this one? I traded on the fives for the first time. Kind of same situation. It's really struggling around the VWAP. I mean, this stock is kind of everywhere right now. You can't really... I mean, I'm in this trade, but... I should probably be thinking about resetting here. You know, if I can get out... With a small... With a small loss... You know, I should probably... Just exit and replan... Because now you can see that it's really struggling with this 20 area. It's definitely staying more below the VWAP, which is good. But at the same time, it looks like it's really trying to move higher. And it does. Same case, we're still closing. Nope, that time we closed above it. Okay, and I exited there. I exited at 35. So I don't know what made me wait that long to get out of the trade, but I waited that long to get out of the trade. It's just now retesting that upper trend line again. So, I mean, it could be a good long, too. Having till the 9. What happened there? Oh, I guess I didn't see it or something. I think this was the other trade that I got skipped over here. That's more of a wedge. It's a triangle on the 1s, but it's a wedge on the 5s. I'm over here trying to long it. So if I'm going to long it, I need to play it on the ones, and it's going to be a really quick trade. Because it probably doesn't have too much higher to go. Let's 
So yeah, same case. Skipped over. I do want to see what it did though. Basically made it the high day. This was on the 19th. So I think this was it here. This is probably it here. So it, it got up there. I mean, it made it up, but it pulled right back down. That's a 1017. That's just an hour into the day. So yeah. Yeah, that was about right there. These two candles in there. Could have been a one to one, I guess, but is what it is. This is the other trade that I didn't get filled on. And this would have been the big winner, too. This one was really upsetting. So I had plenty of space to move down. I don't remember where. I think the 9 was actually at this area, too. Oh, uh, yeah. I think I tried to use a stop limit. And, uh, I guess I, I don't know, I guess I didn't notice the, uh, circuit breaker on it. But it ended up, it ended up moving pretty good. Alright, so now I'm looking at PM again here. I can't remember, I think this is where I traded it earlier in the day. Yeah, 10 so this is, this is where it was. Looks like it ended up getting out of that 20 area as soon as I exited so I don't know I don't know why I I I exited it and what I should have done is you know replanned it entered back in I mean it only, it only moved 20 cents though I don't know could have been a one-to-one -one trade again you know see what it does with the whole number I mean pulls back does everything <sighs> okay, now I'm looking at it for a triangle. I shorted it out of the triangle, and I didn't even care about VWAP. No, I did. I shorted it underneath VWAP, and once it broke VWAP, it made a nice move. Um, so my profit target is 108.20. So 30 cents, and I'm risking risking about 20 cents. Yeah, I risk about 15 cents. That's about a two to one trade here. I wrote 65. So I mean, that is yeah. There's some, there's some distance in there. I'm definitely liking it so far, though. Really nice triangle. The twenty's coming in on it. The nine was over the top. So this is a good trade. Oh, I covered some too. I covered some up in here. Hmm. Didn't hit my profit target. But I think it was that situation where I was saying to myself, okay, well, I'm up a little bit. I'm down on the week. Let's just let's play it safe. That's what I was thinking. And this is where I was thinking, okay, maybe I want to add into this because it's kind of resetting. It's making another triangle. I understand that it's still got all of that stuff coming down on it. So now I'm thinking, I'm saying to myself, okay, maybe I want to add into this. So I had the low of this candle is 32. What I wanted to do, what I clearly should have done, is left my limit order at 31. But I didn't. I changed it. 
I have it in at 31 because it needs to break that in order for me to add. Instead, I decide to save myself the penny and step in at the low instead of the breaking of the low. And I end up getting full 450 shares and it hasn't even broken out of the pattern just yet. So of course comes back and I'm down forty dollars faster than I can even recognize it. And I think I wanted to give that partial until fifty or the uh the added into fifty. Yeah, I had a risk of forty five on it. So I was playing the I was playing with the ones on the add. I mean, it's it's oh, it's okay so far, but I shouldn't even be in. And then it just we get that little squeeze, and we close above, we close at the view app, and then I was still thinking, all right, well, we got the nine and the twenty coming down on the fives, maybe that'll act as some uh, some resistance there. But I mean, when things can go wrong, they do go wrong. I, I even have an opportunity, had an opportunity to cut my losses, and I said, nope, I'm going to hold this one. And then, it just doesn't get worse than that. My kind of rule whenever I do this kind of stuff is whenever I see that huge move, I want to wait for a little, a small pullback. So what I did is... I wait for, uh, you know, I wait until I see one uptick. So that thing went from like 59, 58, 57, 56, 55, and then it bounced up 4 cents. So I mean, I took a big loss on that one. That was just stupid. moving and yeah, went even higher after a while that's not p.m. this is p.m. that was it, that was way over there yeah squeezed up came back but I mean that doesn't mean anything too bad threw away a day on that ad it's crazy just one just one mistake Absolutely crush your day. Alright, last day. Took a trade on GE. Took two trades on GE. <gasps> Symmetrical and uh, bull flag. Definitely see the bull flag. Trading on the ones, um, it's kind of in the middle of a lot of stuff here. So I wrote bull flag risk of 74 cents, so probably a close below the 20 for sure, but that looks like that pivot point is where 74 is at. In at 85 and 90. And a profit target of 305. Probably should have just gone for 23. I'm trying to. I'm really trying to stretch my profit limits for or profit targets for whatever reason. And ordered at 90. And I'll spread myself out. It's probably a good idea. Don't want to short it because of VWAP. VWAP and we got some support right underneath it. So now it's starting to look a little off for a long. Because the 20 is still... The 20 is kind of catching the top of it now. But I'm in. In at 85. It doesn't get to 90. It closes below the 20 and the 20 is still moving up. So, I mean, the 20 is not helping me whatsoever. Let's 
seen some some big sellers on the, uh, the ask. At this point, I could really go either way. So I'm out of the trade. I'm out of the trade, but... That's a two and a three, so I must come back to it fairly quickly. Did I take Seljean? No, I didn't. Oh, uh, it's a circuit breaker, and I think uh, this was a trade where I was trying to catch it on the break of the whole number, but it moved too fast for me. I didn't want to, I didn't want to come back in on a pullback or anything either. So now GE looks interesting. I guess it's a bull flag. Mm. It didn't label it as one. I don't know. Maybe it is. Trying to long it though, I'm. Why am I. Why am I long in this? I have no idea why I'm trying to long this right now. I mean, it couldn't be more obvious as to why I don't want to long this. But staring at the ones, yeah, maybe the ones look okay. Trying to catch the whole number break. I don't know, I guess I wanted that quick pop or something. But that's, uh, that's not good. I said setting up for a better trade long if the 9 is under. Well, the 9 is about to close close under. So maybe now it looks a little bit better. Hmm. Maybe I entered a little bit too early. Decent sized pullback. I'm still waiting for it. Nine's holding, and then, and then the nine doesn't hold, and then the twenty doesn't hold, and I'm out at ninety one. Okay, so then I'm looking at PayPal. PayPal was a pretty good trade, but uh, 17 bucks. Ah, uh, yes, this is only got only got half size. This one was pretty upsetting too. Uh, I said it was very nice triangle, 100k. Taking it out of the fives. I mean, it looks good on the fives. Looks good on the woods. Come on, closing underneath the nine there. And then we're kind of getting a shooting star. I got another minute till the bar closes. I'm trying to get it at 72 and 68. Just get filled at the 68 one. So I mean, if I had, I should be 250. I should be 250 up 20 cents right now. So I could be up 40 bucks. That's again right at the profit target point. What did I put? Profit target 50. Decent pullback there. I just exit. I just exit the trade. I hate whenever, whenever I get that half size stuff. I usually just say forget it. I'll just be out totally whenever it hits the whatever. And then we got Skechers. Skechers last trade of the week on the rising wedge. So 
So I definitely gotta break underneath 20. Looks good on the fives too. So this is a good trade. I wanna take it to profit target 75. So I'm trying to get probably low with this one here. I'm in at 87, 88. So I'm I'm looking at this for a one to one trade. Yeah, I want to take it right about there on the five. Did I trade this on the? I traded on the ones. So remember, the stock was hovering around that whole number for quite some time. So I am short 300 shares at 90, and immediately right to the 50 gets the 78 cents. So I mean we're was that 73? So I mean we're we're basically right at it. Decent sized pullback. I do take my profits though, so that is good. At least what little profits I had, and I mean that thing makes the craziest hanging man you'll ever see on a one minute chart. I'd yeah. Man. After I saw that hanging, I said forget it. I'm just out. And then PayPal happens again for a descending triangle. Kind of the same situation with that other trade where I was looking at it for a, uh, looking at it as a triangle when it's actually wedged. So yeah, same situation. I'm trying to short this, and on the higher time frame, it's telling me that it's a wedge, not a triangle. But on the ones, it's telling me it's a triangle. So I'm I'm thinking, okay, I'll trade on the ones. That's not how that's supposed to work. I mean, it's good long. I should be longing it. I should be in this trade for a long. Well, maybe in this trade for a long, it's obviously got the 50. So Skechers ended up doing that little bounce. Eh, I guess kind of reset later in the day. Maybe could have taken. Maybe it might have been a better short up, up around here somewhere. And eh, just kidding, because that 5. But yeah, there's the PayPal long. Again, hit my profit target in 2 minutes or less. So yeah, um, ugly week, lots of mistakes, um, last week my, last week my mistakes were I traded against the pattern, did that again, I uh, didn't wait for the real move, I had some cases where I didn't do that, whole numbers of profit target areas, clearly didn't pay attention to that one, uh, pay attention to the candle types, I guess I did a little bit better on that. Level 2 showing sellers broke through, retested lower, came back, still sellers, and I didn't take my profit. So again, profit taking problems. After a breakdown, the next candle engulfed the entire move, and I didn't exit the trade. Taking profits when need to, and cut losses when need to. Absolutely failed miserably at that. Uh, my goals for last week were to take profits when told to, cut losses when told to, Recognize when trade taken isn't the best and readjust. If it's a good break, you can hold for a retest. If not, look to take profits early slash cut loss, take losses early. So really, I mean, it's the exact same scenario for this coming week now. I mean, mistakes that I made this week were I didn't respect the higher time frames, didn't set proper tar profit targets, didn't take at the right, didn't take at right. I missed the word. Uh, traded the wrong time frame. Definitely did that with the wedges and the triangles. Ascending, descending. Uh, I forced... Forced my trade a descending triangle when it was a wedge. I waited too long to take profits, and I gave it too much uh, leeway for exiting for my... Uh, the rest of the partial because you know I was up up with winners and then I let it turn all the way against me and even turn me negative never want to do that I forced my risk reward onto the market I said okay well my risk is too big so well this profit target doesn't work so I'll just make it this profit target instead obviously never gonna work I uh, gave stock way too much room for a loss and I also didn't give stock enough time for it to really play out I mean, there's there's a sweet spot in there where I'm trying to find where 
uh, enough is enough and I take my profit target or it's not enough and I take a small winner and then on the other side it's where I okay well I'm down on the trade but it hasn't really failed me quite yet and then there's situations where I'm okay I'm definitely wrong and I need to be getting out but I wasn't getting out so goals for this coming week number one take profits at correct spots this includes setting proper profit targets that has to be number one because I I had plenty of chances to have a decent week and instead it turned into probably I mean I've only had two absolutely horrible weeks so I mean this is basically the worst week that I've had so that that that's got a that, that is a must change. So I didn't take profits. Um, and what do I want to say about losses? Goals for losses. If it doesn't make the move, I need to rethink the plan. I don't know if I like that one. Because I'm thinking of that Adobe trade where I just flat out exited after it didn't do anything. It didn't tell me I was wrong yet. Hmm. If it doesn't make the move, I need to rethink the plan. Well, I need to figure out how to cut my losses better because there were... Here we go. Don't let a winner where you've taken your partial already run against you there's nothing wrong with making money why do I why do I need to be right in the trade when I could make money and then one more goal for a loss if I'm in a losing trade, I need to stick to my plan. I need to stick to my plan. I need to cut losses when I need to cut losses. Which is usually something like, you know, if it closes below the 9. Okay. Okay, I had plenty of opportunities to cut losses, but in most of those situations I said maybe it'll bounce off of this or maybe if it does this it'll come back. So if I catch myself saying maybe if I need to get out of the trade because if I'm negative and the trade hasn't worked in my favor right when I think it's going to do it, the first thing that I need to be thinking about is okay, how do I get out of this trade at the proper time? with minimizing losses because I mean you can see with all these trades you know they make the move and if they're gonna make the move they make the move and they make it pretty quick and I hit my private target quick and there's nothing wrong with them ever but if it doesn't do that I'm I'm holding on to these trades far too long to be trying to hold out for a winner really so that those are the big things here for next week I mean You know, I'm going to say it's a learning experience again, but I mean, I said the same thing last week and I made the exact same mistakes, really. So, I mean, something's got to change. You know, this week's got to be better. This week's got to be tighter. I got to be more conservative. I got to find ways to limit the losses. So, that's going to call it for the video. Good recap. Good uh, write down mistakes. Figuring out what went wrong. 
figure out what to do right the next time around, and all I can do is try harder next week, so thanks for watching, and I'll be back on Monday.